fight tonight here in Memphis, Bureau. John, tremendous concentration for you with the mascot just over his shoulders, <laughs> but uh, Buzz Williams absolutely reveres Kelvin Sampson. They go back 30 years, as John just alluded to. Buzz was a student manager at Navarro College at Corsicana, Texas, just outside Dallas. Kelvin, of course, the head man at Oklahoma. You know, which of these two teams are going to be punching their ticket? The lineups, Radford again, missed the first meeting between the two teams on December the 16th. Jamal Shedd, L.J. Cryer, one of the two stars for Houston. And there's Kelvin Sampson. Only one thing missing from his trophy shelf. Can he take this program to the promised land? Jimmy, they'll try to take one more step here tonight in Memphis. One thing both coaches touched on, how this game will be officiated so critical. Our crew here, Marcus Pettigrew, Lee Cassell, and Jeb Hartness. And Spiro, I think to your point just then, how they're going to officiate it, as you look at the officials. Go ahead, Jimmy. I think, I think you just look at it and you say, Texas A&M is a fabulous offensive rebounding team, right? They get 17 per game. Houston prides himself on their defense and not allowing second chance opportunities. I think if the whistles are going to be blown, they're going to be blown early and often underneath the basket with Texas A&M going after the glass. What did Buzz Williams tell us yesterday? This is going to be like walking to the playground, spotting the bully and going right at him, taking the fight to this gritty Houston Cougar team. Yeah, and I think overall, if fouls do play a role in this in the first eight minutes or so, I think Texas A&M with their depth a little bit more than Houston, Houston coming off some injuries, that should mount into this, you would think. But really, we just want to see an aggressive game and no fouls, which would be fun to watch. It's a Texas A&M team that won 21 games this season. They went 9-9 in SEC play. But they come into this game red hot and full of confidence. They've won six of their last seven. And they get right to work with Obesiki. Yeah, he's coming off a 22-pointer, so his level of confidence is very, very high. And both of these teams come out with man-to-man -man straight up. Sharp may have a little size advantage on Taylor. Shed the skip. This is Cryer underneath. A kick back out, short, a little bit short on the three. Offensive rebound falling into the awaiting arms of Shed. They'll reset here to Cryer. Yeah, they got to make sure they're sticking on Cryer because he's like lightning and can shoot it well. Sharp again, splash, and he gets Houston his first points. Yeah, one of the things about Sharp, he shot the ball fairly well the other night, but came up with 13 points. Uh, good hand. I thought they were headed in our direction early. <laughs> Obasik, he's going to fire again. A little bit short that time. Offensive rebound. What a pace inside. As Radford gets it to Levesque, and they're going to earn a trip to the line. Jimmy, you alluded to it. This is the number one offensive rebounding team in the country. And boy, you won't find two teams that have taken on the personalities of their coach more than these two. Texas A&M and Houston as Walden's Levesque, 83% free throw shooter at the line. Texas A&M took care of Nebraska in the opening round, 98-83. And Houston with an easy first round victory over Longwood to get us where we are here. See what Houston has done all time in this round of the tournament. Just consider all the expectations, the weight on this team to make a deep run. But they turn back Taylor. They get it back. Washington, who was terrific the other night, earns another trip to the free throw line for the Aggies. And that's another blast to the offensive glass, that time by Washington, just trailing it. You see how they come down the floor. He's going to work his way to the middle of the court where he's very, very effective. He can go both ways with it. As they come up with another opportunity off the glass. Missile charge to Javier Francis is first. 
So here's Solomon Washington, really good the other night. Seven points, four blocks. Oh, you can watch live men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Download now to stay up to date on all the action. And Spiro, when you look at right now with you know, less than two minutes of action play, the front line guys for Houston each have one foul, Roberts and Francis. It's early, but let's see if they go after that, make, make some hay and try to go after them on the offensive end. Houston Cougars, 31 wins on the season. Finished the regular season, number two in the AP poll. And Sharp buries another triple. I, I don't think he gets enough attention. Obviously, he's not getting enough attention right now on the offensive end. Radford bottles up, gets it back, and he cleans it up. Good stay. Very good going to his left. He's a left-handed player, so they have to read that scouting report and make sure they're okay with it. Spiro, watch what, what Texas A&M does. Watch along the baseline here, how they plug somebody into the middle of the floor. You see how he's cheating right there? They do that as well as any team in the country. And he fouls right there, but he's there defensively to help out. They plug the middle of the floor. So you look across court, make people run a bit. Now that's one of the downsides to plugging the middle of the floor. It's a long way to go. And then Radford just stays on this play cleans it up so here is Roberts at the free throw line they've had to ask Roberts for even more production he's had a really good season but with the injuries Jimmy that they've had especially to Joseph Tugler lost him early part of this month after he had to undergo foot surgery just more on the plate of all their other bigs left on their roster and Roberts himself has been dealing with a shin injury the last couple of weeks Rims in the second, ties this game. Yeah, that's why I think Spiro, you know, as, as we go along, I would expect Texas A&M to continue to, yeah, they could shoot the ball from the outside, but I think they'll earn their keep if they keep driving this Houston team a little bit. Well, there you go. To the box, body bumping, layup, no, oh. and it's tapped out. <laughs> what a play by Anderson Garcia. Yeah, what a drive by Radford, too, to get that shot off. He just missed an easy one. Garcia, number one rebounder in the SEC. Taylor's three. No, boy, look out. Boy. As Francis takes a nasty spill and the basketball back to the Cougars. Couch your courtside. Refresh your fandom with a delicious Coke Zero Sugar. Is it the best Coke ever? Try and decide. Let me know if you want to get out there and try to box somebody out. <laughs> uh, that'll be a hard no, Jimmy. <laughs> Physicality between those these two teams so right. to behold. It really is. Three-pointer from Cryer won't go. Nice pass with the left hand. Washington's three no. And again, look at Garcia. As he's a specialist on that. Looking for offensive clearance on the ball. Just get his hands on it. And it's love the way if they don't get to it, they tip it out and their guards stay this short of half court. Radford, now to Taylor, inside, no. <laughs> Everything's contested though, isn't it? I think you keep driving it too. Make Houston defend off the dribble. Boy, Wade Taylor's been on some kind of a heater. Back-to-back 30-point -back games in the SEC tournament. And sensational in their opening round win over Nebraska as Sharp misses from deep. See the shooting numbers for the Aggies. With exactly four minutes gone by here in Memphis. Uh, Buzz Williams putting the brakes on this possession here. Here comes Radford, spins into the double. He has the force. He flicks it up. And he's going to shoot free throws. Kelvin Sampson and his bench can't believe it. Boy, this is high intensity. Everything we expected between the Aggies and Cougars here in Memphis. 
I'm Jamie Erdahl back in New York with this Get More with Geico game break. It's all locked up over on TBS between Grand Canyon and Alabama. That was Mark Sears in traffic for the Roll Tide. He's got 20 leads all scores. It's close. Alabama looking for another trip to the Sweet 16. All right, Jamie, back here in Memphis early stages. There's your score, 7-7. Seven, seven. Well, there's one guy here in the house who's hoping for a deep run from his beloved Cougars. There's Jim Nance, our buddy and colleague. His son Jameson taking it all in here. This was the scene a couple of weeks ago with Cougars unveiling a banner honoring Jim, his remarkable career, calling 32 Final Fours. Tip of the cap to Jim, just incredible. What a career. What a career. Pretty awesome to see him with Jameson here taking in the sights. There's the free throw from Radford. Jimmy, what about some thoughts here? What are you seeing so far a couple of minutes into this game? Well, we thought there was gonna, they were going to play this inside and really muscle one another as best they can as he misses that second one. Clock went off for a reason, but they keep playing through it. It's, it's just fun to watch this type of game in person, you know, because you really get a feel for the aggressive nature of it and the speed in which they're playing at. Javier Francis sits on the bench, picked up his second personal, as Cedric Lott has checked into the game. And they forced Shed the baseline that time. Sharp off the dribble, misses, fight for it, Roberts. This is Shed, no good, and the Cougars come up empty. That's usually where they get a bucket on their side, the offensive glass and the kickouts to the perimeter. Where this end, Taylor and Radford are a combined one for six, Jimmy, their top two scores. Let's see what the call is here with Obasaki forcing the issue. It's going to be sharp. Watch him almost give him a little bear hug here at one point. There's one, there's two. He just keeps reaching and grabbing because he knew he was out of position to begin with. One thing Kelvin Sampson touched on about this Texas A&M team, he said the one thing different, they, they know what they want to do and how they want to play offensively. They've got a plan as Radford is cash money with that mid-range J. Boy, his back-to-back -back games are really starting to stack up in terms of his performance with his 20 in the opener. Try to force him to the corners and help to the baseline side. You see where there's help there? It's a tough catch for yep. Shed. Prior from deep. And Texas A&M's reaction, very good from right side to left side and back out to the shooter on the diagonal. And Basicki underneath, wow. okay. then a flip by Garcia. Officials say jump ball and the possession arrow is going to give it to Houston. And just a couple of bodies on the floor that trip. <laughs> Buzz Williams loving it. So let's see the reaction defensively. Here they keep right in front of the dribbler. You know, that one of the things, too, Spiro, that Houston does so well is the bigs. Um, almost a foul there. I don't know if he touched them coming down on the top. The ball may have saved them from committing a foul just then. But the bigs for Houston are very quick with their lateral motion, so we'll see them stop and get out front and defer and push the dribblers away. Cryer on the three, that's short. So Houston, interestingly now, eight of their nine shot attempts have been three-pointers. Obasik, he's gonna reset. Taylor! Oh, look at that! Oh, look at that, too! Shed! Off the defense of Obasik! Cryer is there. They're playing SWAT ball all of a sudden, the way they're going after it. The athleticism oh, between goodness. these two teams is off the charts. Such smart play, too, and you can't get a hand, two hands on it to grip it and grab it. Take a swat, a swipe at it. And... Good skip pass. Yep. Dribble drive from Coleman. He's bumped on the dribble. Watch that smack by Garcia. Now, like, same thing. Shed does the same thing. Efforts all over the place. Three and four efforts just then. Both sides. Foul charge to Cedric Lott is his first and fifth team foul against the Cougars. Here comes Radford with hesitation, and he lays it up and in. Well, you got to remember that he's a lefty. I know that's simple, but Dunn came out first time on the floor and let him go right by him with the left hand. Force him to the right, even though 
He had Radford has one of the best spins from the right to left. I'm sure we'll see that at some point. Roberts play pretty drop step and he goes glass. I have to mix it up a little bit. Nice job by Houston getting the ball away from the perimeter as you touched on a moment ago. Not hitting their outside shots. Test the waters down deep with your bigs. Roberts, the redshirt senior from St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. Radford, no. Aggies one and done as Houston keeps him off the offensive glass. Damian Dunn has checked into the game. This is Shed. Nice delay by Shed also. Even though Texas A&M got back in a hurry, his delay out front didn't want to push it in a fans fast break transition play, but that was just as good in the delayed break by himself. Jamal Shed, the player of the year in the Big 12. Not to mention the defensive player of the year in what was a brilliant season. Offensive rebound, Coleman back up and he's fouled. And that's probably a good foul because Coleman would have just finished that off for an easy bucket. The watch Radford just goes right by Dunn. He gave he gives him the shield to go to the left, and that's he is a lefty, so he'll make that happen. Watch this delay. And puts it right up with that left hand. Smart play by Shed, but that's what he does, makes smart plays. So Henry Coleman, 69% free throw shooter hits on the first. Watch whip around coverage of all men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with Fast Break presented by Nissan in the March Madness Live app. Download today. Jim, interesting Texas A&M star Wade Taylor who came in on some kind of a heater yep. is 0 for 5 so far. He has yet to score a point. So if you're Buzz Williams, you have to be at least partly encouraged that this yeah, game is tied. Score. Yeah, and against uh, for 25 points that first round, but more importantly, the way he was shooting the basketball, he was 7 for 10 from the three-point line. And he's been a little bit feast or famine at times, but yes, boy, yes, he yes. come in red hot. 25 points on average over their previous five, including those back-to-back 30-point -back games in the SEC tournament. They have a matchup size advantage with Dunn. Shed the drive and kick. Wilson out front. This is sharp. Back to Shed. The fake. Two to shoot. Wilson will let it rip. And they missed. Pretty good execution, though, by Houston to use that clock and not rush to a four shot. Garcia on the box. Obasiki slinging it. Splash! I just like the look by Garcia just then. He got it underneath. And didn't really look to go with it because I know he knew that there was a defender behind him and just kicks it to the perimeter. Obasik, he's shooting it at a plus 50% clip in his last seven starts, and he's picked up where he's left off. Shed going high off glass. And yeah, Texas A&M's punk defense just at that time was late in the initial setup and even later on the drive to try to stop Shed. Obasik, oh, watch him spin back. back. Wilson, he's going to fade. A little bit short, fight for it, and Sharp clears. You have to continue to read Texas A&M's defense. Look at Shed. Oh, handle. That's goaltender. Go Boy, that was all <laughs> Shed. Dazzling <laughs> with that handle. Talk about shedding defenders. Try to get him. Watch him break somebody down here. Chris and Cross, and beautifully done. And the guards are just really stacking it up right now. Texas A&M guys shooting the ball fairly well. Well, be prepared for history to be written, hearts to be broken, and one champion to be chosen in the 2024 Stanley Cup playoffs. NHL on TNT playoff coverage begins April the 20th on TBS and Max. Seconds ago, John Rothstein with Kelvin Sampson. All right, Kelvin, how do you clean up the defensive glass? Um, keep JV and France on the floor would help. Him getting two fouls um, um, is just devastating for us because we just don't have another sub behind him. So we either let him play with two or, or go small. Right now we're going small, but we, I'm sure we're going to have to bring him back. All right, thanks. Talk to you in a bit. Okay.
All right, John, what a juggernaut of a program Kelvin Sampson has built. 31 wins this year, Jimmy, despite the fact that he has lost four different starters at various points of the season. He mentioned some of the, the thinness that they have with their front court. Huge loss of Joseph Tubler. Beautiful pass here, Garcia. Series of fakes, and he comes up with the deuce. And Radford, a guy who likes to shoot that shot coming through into Kelvin Sampson's comment on whether he puts the big in Francis with two fouls I think you'll see the scoreboard indicate that if they go you know if they get down eight or ten he might go to him but I think he'll want to save him for the second half Francis has been on the bench for the last five minutes of game action this is Wilson they leave him open and he hits big shot for the Cougars Jed starts it Sharp continues it and then they finish it off with a beautiful Wilson jumper Wilson, the Texas Tech chance for Obasik, he misses in a crowd. At this end, meantime, Houston started two of 10 shooting. They've hit six of their last seven. As Obasik, he is called for the bump. Look at the first pass there, out, and then the quick release. Very unselfish play to get you three on the board in a hurry. Jimmy, we have yet to see Ramon Walker in for Houston tonight. Remember, they got Walker back from that knee injury, made his return. First time they've had him since late February, the lateral meniscus tear. Wade Taylor has checked back in for Buzz Williams' meet time as we cross the midway point of his first half. Yeah, Walker's a big that could give him some lift off the, off the uh, boards also. Shot clock down to seven. Shed guarded by Washington, near side, Cryer, baseline shot, no, but he's bumped. So LJ Cryer, Texas kid, Baylor transfer, will head to the free throw line as we take a little peek at our tournament summary. Duke, lopsided victory over James Madison, and they now wait the winner of this one here between Houston and Texas A&M. What a win earlier here in Memphis by Clemson. There's Kelvin's granddaughter, Maisie Jade. Mm. Apple of his eye, as he told <laughs> yes, us this absolutely. week. Absolutely. And she is hoping that uh, Grandpa's run with this team will continue just a few more days. And Kelvin's all, all business when it comes to basketball, but when he started talking about the grandkids, you see the run by Houston, five ties, nine lead changes. They're up four. Look at the way they clamp down on the perimeter. Just one-on-one, -on -one, you're expected to stop your guy. Redford erased by Cryer. Shot clock didn't reset. Five, Taylor. Oh, watch out. Look out. Bodies all over the place. Looks like everyone's okay. Wade Taylor now is 0 for 6. Let's get the call here. I'm just going to be real honest with you on this field. I don't know what happened to the traffic. Boy, it's going to be a one and one. His body's bumping. And watch this now. Who'd they get on that? Boy, like Radford was bumped into Cryer. What a tough break yeah. for Houston. But again, the offensive rebounding prowess of AM is really what's keeping them here. So within four points. Yeah, 13 rebounds, but seven of them so far in the offensive end. Boy, Radford misses on the front end. So Texas A&M, if you just joined the six of 21 from the field, they're one of six from three. And Ro look at Roberts out there, Spiro, right at the top of the key area now. He is struggling a bit. And might be looking over to, he looked over to the bench for a second. Told you about that shin injury. Shed's gonna fire. Back of the rim, no. Long rebound, Cryer elevates and hits baseline. Yeah, Rob, Ro they're going to have to make a substitution for Roberts. He started to jog down. I, I would think they'd have to. Yeah, they're getting somebody up off the bench. Javier Francis with his two personals jogs over to the table. Go right at him if you have him. Houston has scored seven straight. This is Washington down to the box. Tough pass to Garcia. Tend to shoot. Little backdoor hit. Oh. Well, Garcia is fun to watch too on the offensive glass. That was a little tricky flip backdoor cut and pass with the delivery. There is a slickness and a cleverness to that kid Garcia's game. See the way they're trying to get Shed to go along the baseline. Oh. Deep shot for 
Mike Houston. Shed is picking it apart because he knows they're trying to bait him into going to the baseline, but he's smart enough not to go all the way. Here comes Radford, left it short, gets it back, oh, missed. Uh -oh. And Washington hitting the glass. But Buzz Williams looking for some answers. They're down seven with 7.32 left. Here's and a, a day to Dallas on the line here in Memphis. Emmanuel Sharp, hot here at the start. Get complete coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Tournament at NCAA.com. Seconds ago, John Rothstein with Buzz Williams. Buzz, how did they build the lead in those last couple minutes? We're just not physical enough. Uh, we're not guarding the ball well enough. They're getting us in rotation. Too often times they're getting an offensive rebound. We've got to be more physical, take up the cushion, try to keep the ball on the side. All right, thanks. Talking a bit. Buzz Williams has this Aggies team in the tournament. Another look at the potential injury. Roberts came up hobbled a little bit. We've been talking about that shin injury as they look at him now. Clearly still bothering him, Jimmy, on that bench. Yeah, trying to do their best to numb it a little bit. Looks like, looks like some cold spray going on it. And so Washington at the free throw line. And the Aggies now 5 of 10 at the stripe. John, what do you have? All right, well, Spear, well, Jaywan Roberts re-aggravated that shin injury that hurt him last week in the Big 12 tournament. Got some treatment, but he should be fine to come back, Spear. All right, so good news for the Cougars. As Wilson clears, what's the call here? It's going to be against Texas A&M as they're going to get Radford underneath. And Buzz just said not playing aggressive enough. You have a comment on that, Spear? <laughs> this, this looks pretty aggressive to me. He's on a free throw. Yeah, push as he spun around. Look at this full court action on Shed from Washington. Here comes the ball. Oh, again, Washington <laughs> swallowed him up. Wow, he went right by him initially, but Washington really put the Jets on. There we go. Redford slicing through the teeth of the defense. Yeah, look at this. They're still putting Washington right here on Shed to challenge him. Let's see how he plays. He's taller. And at 6'7, Shed a little quicker. Radford, who played for Buzz Williams at Virginia Tech. Big basket for the Aggies. Dryers pass stolen. It's Radford. A foot race to the rock, and he lays it up and in. He's so good at getting out in the open floor, but he's better at delaying his shot after the bodies go flying by him. One thing Texas A&M likes to do, they like to split the court. Once you get the ball on one side, they want to keep it on that side as best they can. This is sharp. In and out, fight for it. Taylor tracks it down. Good decision by Taylor here. There were three Houston players back, so a good decision to wait it out and pull it back. The Aggies are shooting 35%, and miraculously, it's a three-point game. Yeah, it was a good decision, too, Spiro, because of where they are on the scoreboard. They're making a little run right now, so make sure you get a good shot. Bradford has come alive. He's got a team-high 10 points. Here he comes, five to shoot. His pass deflected. Nice interior defense yeah, by that. Francis. They read the spin. Oh, nice walk. Wilson off the deflection kick. Sharp left open. He is cash money in this opening half. Sharp has a dozen. That's his fourth triple of the half. 36% from the three-point line on the year. When they know that he's hot, they find them. When he has had big scoring games, this has been a different Houston team. Timeout on the floor. Cougars by six. Here in Memphis, five and change left before halftime. As we take a little peek at our AT&T connected cam. Yes. Oh. Spiro, watch the way he hangs in the air, up there, delays, and then finishes that off. And the answer from the Houston side, though, watch the puck over here on this side of the floor, and the diagonal pass comes his way. And sharp, I don't want to say it, might be a sharp shooter, huh? 
I don't want any elbows from you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let that one slide. All right, thanks. As uh, Buzz Williams looking for some answers here. Aiden Hefner, young man from the Netherlands, one of his senior players. And Buzz's first commitment upon taking the A&M gig back in 2019 is on the floor now for the Aggies. Yeah. Hefner, 63, has sent his shots at threes. Obasiki has to hurry, two to shoot. Fires, no, another offensive rebound. Garcia relentless on the glass. Nice Hefner look. to set up, Garcia gets it back and he's headed to the line. Well, Garcia just making it happen though. On the offensive glass, making the right pass to trigger some things and some action. Really giving good, good minutes off the bench. Look at him go after the ball. This time he knows he can grab it. What does he do? He feeds it to the middle of the floor, and they feed it right back. And this is some finish underneath to get to the right side of the hoop. Good little dribble drive there in the middle of court by Hefner. So Garcia, the senior, born in the Dominican Republic, entering the tournament. He was tied with Zach Eady for the most offensive rebounds in the country. Just an absolute master on the glass. Yep. Great defensive player, too. See what Sharp has done in the struggles of the rest of the team with Houston holding a three point lead. And as we move past the five minute mark, whistle here against Solomon Washington. After the game, watch the impractical Jokers publicly humiliate each other for your enjoyment. Next, after NCAA coverage. I actually like that jacket. Jimmy, I almost wore mine today. <laughs> <laughs> Shed back to Cryer, finds the laces. Wow, lucky. Lucky short. We'll yeah. get a better look than that. No, they're lucky to leave him alone like that. That's the wrong guy. He shoots at just a touch under 40% on the year. Boy, can this kid Taylor get going? He stumbles, somehow gets it to Coleman, and then a reach-in foul. Boy, looked like a broken play. Taylor sticks with it. And some, two free throws coming up here for the Aggies. Some people might be saying, why isn't this called a travel if he falls down with the ball? But watch, he doesn't he doesn't have the ball as he falls. He's still in a dribbling motion, so he keeps that alive and reacts and makes a better play out of something that was really broken, like you said, Spiro. Boy, if anyone told Buzz Williams before this game, Wade Taylor would be scoreless at the 433 mark of the first half, 0 of 6. And it would be a one possession game. I'm not sure he would have believed it. Yeah, you, you better start making your free throws, too, if you're Texas A&M. Look at this 0 for 6 and 0 for 6 from the three point stripe after the game he put up. Can't overstate how hot Wade Taylor has been over the last couple of weeks. But, Jimmy, you're right. The free throw shooting becoming a problem. Yep. As A&M now 7 of 14 at the line. And somehow, this is a two point game. Just incredible. And it becomes magnified when you look at Houston only three for four. So they've had ten, uh, ten more attempts than Houston from the free throw line here. Again, two teams that faced off in the middle part of December on a neutral court in Houston, a game won by the Cougars. This is Cryer, quarter pocket three, no. And a loose ball foul against Houston. I think it might be done right there. No, who'd they get on this one? Uh, done in. Number five on that side, Francis, I guess. But both of them are over there. Let's see who they get here. Yes, you're right. I believe it is going to be Francis, and that's going to be his third personal. And let's see. Mm, that's interesting. Double bonus for the Aggies, so two free throws here for Tyrese Radford. One thing that Kelvin Sampson told us, we just can't afford to get our bigs in foul trouble. Uh, Cedric Lott is going to have to be summoned here by Sampson. You mentioned the injuries that they've had. Losing Tugler, foot surgery, such a huge piece of Kelvin's front court. I, I almost feel like Kelvin's arguing that it might have been Dunn who fouled just then. So it will be Garcia, the free throw shooter. 4.15 left. Doesn't look like Kelvin's going to win that argument. No. Garcia, a 71% free throw shooter. SEC all defensive team. Led the conference in rebounding. And he has played a huge role in this first half. And I, and I think with Francis, watch for his right arm here. 
Yeah, I guess he does. You know, both of them, Francis actually pushed before Dunn did, so they, they made the right call just then because he was the first culprit. We are tied in Memphis. Useful small ball right now. Francis to the bench, picks up his third. Here's Dunn. Well, the Temple transfer calmly does it on that baseline. He initially didn't fit in early on in the season, but started to work his way back. Oh, Benson King working hard. Remember, depleted up front, so a good time for Texas A&M to continue to pounding this ball towards the basket. Well, okay. Basaki inserted as a starter just over two weeks ago. What a decision that's turned out to be for Buzz Williams. Here's Dunn. He'll fire. Short. Nice kept tip. alive. It's Wilson. Pryor tiptoes in. Wilson looking for some daylight. This is Shed. Back rim and it's Dunn. But Taylor is there on the take for the Aggies. Yep, a nice look. What a dime inside. Garcia is going to shoot. What vision by Taylor. And what a decision by Taylor, too. There's two parts to that, really, Spiro. Number one is recognizing that nothing's going to happen with him one on three. And then pulling it back just a touch. And look at that perfect strike. And uh, Bryce Drew, what a season it was for Grand Canyon, but uh, it all ends for the Lopes. The Chuck stop here at Memphis. As uh, we take a little look at our game summary, 3.15 left before halftime. Jimmy, we expected this one to be highly intense. And maybe not the prettiest of games. No, but it's it's played out like we were, we were told it might play out. Both coaches emphasizing how aggressive they play. What a chess match between two of the best in the coaching game. Kelvin Sampson, one of the all-time careers in the history of the sport. Buzz Williams, the respect level between these two men. One thing Kelvin told us about Buzz, he said, Buzz has it. I'm not sure what it is, but he's got it. Just a tremendous track record of success everywhere Buzz has been in his career. Look at the way they help out on the pick and rolls. They weren't going to run that many of them, Houston, but they are. Pryor thought about it. This is Shed knifing in. A leaner tough shot from a tough kid. Yeah, you're not kidding, because getting it up off the glass in particular from that angle, you know, most guys are trying to throw the floater right over the rim, but his touch is so good, he banks it in. Seven ties, 11 lead changes, and boy, the Aggies parade to the free throw line continues. These will be their 19th and 20th free throws of the half. As LJ Cryer's whistled for his second. A reminder to keep it here. at t at the half. Scores and highlights coming up. We'll get you around the NCAA tournament. All the news and notes you need. It's all to come on at t at the half. So here's Manny Obasaki. You mentioned his insertion into the starting lineup. Last seven plus games, he's averaged nearly 17 points for Buzz Williams, including that 22 point gem in the opener on Friday. And Spear, I'm going down the stat sheet too, and you look at the star, you know, the people on the Houston team, you know, there's one, two, three guys, four guys with two fouls or more, including Francis's three. So fouls are really mounting up. Here comes Shed, and he takes contact. It's just amazing how quick he is, and everybody knows he's a right-handed player, and good players understand how to get to their spots and watch him just wiggle his way in, gets hit, and keeps his concentration to finish it off. Watch after he gets hit, he starts to fall out of bounds right there towards the right, and can adjust in a hurry with the strength to finish it off. Now, Kelvin Sampson is not a guy who throws out platitudes and compliments. This is one of his all-time favorite players right here, Jamal Shedd. As gritty and as talented a player as we have in the country. Can he be the player that takes his program to the college basketball mountaintop? How about a little zone look for Houston right now, too? You know, we see that too often with them. Nice pick to the middle. Underneath, Coleman off the <laughs> and somehow gets it to drop. 
It's a two-point game as we hit the two-minute mark here in Memphis. And Houston usually plays that man-to-man -man all the time. Shed. Oh. He's just too good. Well, he's starting to own this game right now with the foul troubles that his teammates have. Why not take it over? 11 points, 5 of 10 from the floor. Second Cougar in double figures. Oh, Basaki! Throwing a haymaker! I'm not sure the zone's working that well, Spiro. Foul problems will cause you to go into the zone. But boy, if you've not played it a lot and practice it often, you're going to have trouble with your assignments. And looking to try to get this ball out of Shed's hands. Good ball movement by the Cougars. This is done. Chisels into the paint, and he puts it down. Nice, nice pace to this game right now for both sides. Back to the man-to-man -man in a hurry. Whoa. Taylor is mauled. A lot of contact. Shed argues and pleads his case. Two free throws coming up, and a chance for Taylor to finally get his first points. Yeah, look at the crossover and then the step across. Beautifully executed. And watch this one, baby. Obasaki finishing it off. So Shed, who's still pleading his case, picks up his second personal. And here is Wade Taylor now at the free throw line. 84% of the season, and he misses. Spiro, just watch when he shoots the free throw here, how much rotation he gets on the basketball. Basically gets as much rotation on the ball as just about anybody I've seen in a while. And usually, when you have that rotation, that shot that he just put up generally sits on the rim. Man, it's, it's perfect. Hard to believe. Taylor gets his first point of the night at the 103 mark of the first half. Remember, though, he's very streaky. And Kelvin Sampson knows that, too. Next whistle against the Aggies puts Houston in the one and one. Ten on the timer. Carter defending Shed. Out to Dunn. He'll fire. Wow. Shed streaks in. He'll bring it all the way out again. Smart. Shot clock resets to 20. Shed sizes up Carter on the take. And that's going to put him at the free throw line. Boy, this has been all Shed over the last two minutes and change. As he's got a chance to put them in front by five. His parents, Lisa and Elvin. How proud must they be of their boy? Have a nice t-shirt there, taking it to the shed. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Some clever t-shirts. But you know what, though, Spiro, from a scouting report standpoint, where has he been doing all his damage when he's driving on the right side of the floor? I know he can go left. I know he's a fabulous player, but take a little of the edge off by forcing him to use his left hand a little more. Shed hits on the front end. One of the things Kelvin told us, he's credited his parents. Everyone talks about how talented this kid is. He's also a star in the classroom, a GPA over 3.8. And the first thing he said, his parents, give them all the credit. As he has put the Cougars now in front by five, 25.6 left before the intermission with the winner here moving on to Dallas yeah, to take on Duke. Another zone look. Let's see if he gets one of the small wings to flash to the middle of the floor at some point. Now, it's like a, a matchup, but they're now looking at it at a 1-1-3. Obasaki. Aggies are in the double bonus. Here he comes. The spin. Contact. No. Fight for it. Done the save. Shed. And that's going to get us to halftime as Houston desperately protecting the defensive glass. Wade Taylor, hard to believe, just one point, 0 for 6, was a and star in that first half. John standing by with Kelvin Sampson. Kelvin, how do you have a lead with all the foul trouble up front? Well... We have to be very smart to figure out what our problem is. I mean, we got everybody on our team is in foul trouble, but sometimes you just got to figure it out. We're, we're, we've got band-aids and uh, ace bandages and splints and all that stuff to 
you know, we're just throwing guys out there. I mean, we got a guy playing center, never played basketball until he's 15 years old, but we'll figure it out. But your defense has done a great job on Wade Taylor in the first half. How? Well, they're going to uh, the, the two left-handers. They're shooting all the balls. All right, have a good rest of that. Spiro. All right, John, so Calvin Sampson and the Cougars in a dog fight here in Memphis. They're up five. We'll get you to AT&T at the half after these messages. You're watching the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. So here in Memphis, just before we get ready to start the second half, we want to acknowledge a very special person on our crew, our graphics operator, Lisa Hansen, who's retiring after 40 years in the television business. Lisa has had a remarkable career. She's worked all the big events. She's done it at the highest level. Beloved part of our CBS Sports family, and uh, we are going to miss Lisa. We're really privileged to have her part of this crew. One thing Lisa really wants, she wants to see the first half stats <laughs> presented by Marriott Bonvoy. There you go. <laughs> Lisa built these stats for us, some of her handiwork. Five Very point nice. lead for uh, Houston as we sit in for the final 20 minutes as we welcome you back courtside. Spiro Adidas, Jim Spinarco. We'll hear from John Rothstein in just a couple of seconds. First half thoughts and what are we looking for here? First couple of minutes of the second half. I guess the only way I can explain this is in the old days when we used to play five on five, you would call your own fouls in the, in the playground. I'm glad they're not doing this right now, Spiro, because there are plenty to go around in that first half. But it'll be interesting to see. Foul trouble will play a factor most likely when it comes to the Houston side of the ball right now. Look at that number, 29 combined field goals and just three turnovers in the first half. Boy, the flick, <laughs> Redford. Story this game has been the offensive rebounding by Buzz Williams, but that's something we've seen from this bunch all year. Number one offensive rebounding team in the country. They have 11 now and they average 17, so they're nearing that average. And Houston's got to do a much better job of keeping them away from it. LJ Cryer, the Baylor transfer, gets the Cougars on the board. Yeah, he's one of the guys who just has to get on track. He's two for seven at the half. You would think they'd run and call his number a few times. Here comes Obasaki, little spin, fight for it. And Cryer on the take for Houston. Yeah, those spin shots were the ones that were going down in their first game against Nebraska. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait. oh my God. Officials say last touched by the Aggies. So you look at the action on the offensive glass and watch this little flip shot as he falls off his pace. And a nice finish, though. Houston Cougars trying to get back to the Sweet 16 for what would be a fourth straight year, including their run to the Final Four a couple of years ago. That corner three from Sharp. No, it's kept alive by Roberts, but here comes Obasik. Key little contact. No basket. Offensive foul. You know, the trick to this play by Shedd is let's see if he moves at all, because if you move, it's going to get called the other way. But watch, he plants, and he stands still. Even though Obasik, Obasik he comes over, but he, he runs him over, even though he's sliding by. That's Jamal Shedd, Defensive Player of the Year in the Big 12 this season. Let's check in with John. Well, Spear, I just talked to Buzz Williams, and he told me his biggest point of emphasis in the locker room was Texas A&M gave up too many long offensive rebounds in the first half. That generated extra possessions for Houston. Why the Cougars have the lead, Spear. Now, John, that's a huge call. Obasik, he's third personal, so he has to sit. Less than 90 seconds into the second half. Here's Cryer looking for some daylight. Shedd's going to launch. And the rebound controlled by Jace Carter, the junior. And back come the Aggies. Here comes Radford, one of their stars. No offensive rebound, and they're going to get Roberts on a reach in. Jimmy, they just will not stop coming on the offensive glass. And that's number three on Jawan Roberts. Couch your courtside, refresh your fandom with a delicious Coke Zero Sugar. Is it the best Coke ever? Try and decide. You know, Spiro, once in a while, I think, and not all the time, Carter just comes up short walking off the line. I think when they get in trouble in the lane, they flip that ball up 
just to put it on the glass so somebody can go try and get it. Boy, these missed free throws starting to become a big part of the story. They come up empty again. The Aggies are now 11 of 24 at the free throw line. And Jimmy, a critical juncture here with Obasaki to the bench. Keep in mind, Wade Taylor, the number one scorer, is 0 for 7. He's got one point if you've just joined us. Cryer. And he buries it three. And relatively quiet in the first half. I guess that was Jim Nance enjoying that shot, huh? One of the Cougars' favorite signs. Open that. That's going the other it's way. It's an Spiro. offensive foul. It's Sharp drawing the contact. Yep. Number 13, Washington with the arm extension. Got to be careful now if you're Texas A&M. And so here's that little push. And now watch. Here's the other part of it. The right arm shiver. Prior, you knew they were going to try to run a couple of sets for him. Gets that right foot back and great rotation on the basketball. And Houston in control right now. Solomon Washington picks up his third personal. So he has to sit alongside Obasaki. Danger zone here if you're the Aggie. Shed's pass broken up. Good hands in traffic just then. Anderson Garcia comes up with it. Here comes Taylor. They desperately need him to get going. And finally, their star has his first basket of the night. Did you see that play out front, too? Where Shed tried to go for a steal, and Taylor just blew right by him as they shift back into a zone right now. Taylor, the junior from Dallas, here's Cryer, finds the lace and splash! The zone breakdown because one guy had the ball, and Cryer dribbled right out of it. Next thing you know, he's got a wide open shot. Led the Big 12 and was 13th nationally in made threes this season. He scored their last eight. This is a deep three. Carter, deep shot for the Aggies. He's had eight games of double-figure scoring, so he can light it up on occasion. That was a picture-perfect jumper. It's like a two-three look. And now it's back to a, like a matchup. Boy, Sharp with the physical defense right in his chest. He never flinched. Oh, they've put up 10 points in a hurry, too, haven't they? Making good decisions. Let's see if Taylor can get streaky. There you go. <laughs> this kid has had some prodigious scoring runs. Can he get going for the Aggies? Five-point game as we cross the 16-minute mark. Zero. He's not going to stop playing because he's two for nine from the floor. Dunn into the corner, Sharp. Oh, fight for it. Man, boy, Sharp off the deflection, and it's last touched by a and now You get one out in the front, and you know you can go by people. Watch the speed, fake to the left, and he's got a big guy down there, Coleman kind of opening up some space for him. And here's the pull-up. May get him untracked as we progress in this game. Recent history between these two teams. They met on a neutral floor in Houston on December the 16th. It was a crazy game. Houston blowing a 21 point lead in the second half of that game. Radford did not play for the Aggies. That was the game where Arsenal went down with that devastating Achilles injury. Kelvin told us about the, the tears at halftime. He's such a huge emotional piece for this Houston team. Wade Taylor was incredible in the second half, and he may, he may need to have a similar run, Jimmy, if they're going to win this one tonight. We get a whistle here. And now Shed a little bit late to get to his feet. Oh, that's the last guy that can afford to lose for even a minute. Shed was trying to read this defense, and to be honest with the Spear, I was too. It looked like it was going to initially be man-to-man, -man, then it folded into the middle of the floor as if it was a zone. And he just said, you know what? I'm just going to keep dribbling the ball until they figure out what they're supposed to be doing defensively. His parents looking on Lisa and Elvin. This is Cryer. Little fake. Short. 
Knocked around like a pinball, and Radford squeezes in. A bunch of people getting their hands on that ball. Boy, Radford, by the way, has a double-double. What a night he's had. A little bit of a high pass. And that is only the fourth Aggies turnover tonight. And Houston's only have, has three Spiro, so you look at that and you say, wow, the way this game has been going up and down, it's amazing. The bad news for Buzz is that three of them have come yeah. in less than five minutes since halftime. Or well, the intensity between these two coaches just off the charts. Buzz Williams, Kelvin Sampson. What a matchup. What a chess match here in Memphis. Winner again advances to Dallas, where they will take on Duke. They're back into his zone right now. Middle of the floor is wide open again. No flashes, though. Shed the bounce into the corner. Cryer, little bump, and he sticks it again. LJ Cryer starting to light up the night here in Memphis. You know, you want your guards out front playing as if there's a string attached to them. That was a perfect example of Shed breaking somebody down off the dribble and Cryer just reading his spot on the floor. Boy, Taylor right into the teeth of the defense, knocked out of bounds. And the officials say it'll stay right here. You know, if you take a look at Shed, watch this. He does that, and the other guy here goes that way, and they match up one another as if they're tied to a string. When one goes, the other follows. Here's Radford. For a lot of body bumping inside. Good gets it back. That was a good recovery. Taylor! Look at Garcia. Unbelievable, that kid. The relentlessness on the glass continues. Taylor slithers in and he misses. They're out of control, that last shot. Uh, every time they're out of control, it just makes it that much more difficult for them because they have to come up with a good stop here defensively. So Wade Taylor now, 2 of 12 from the field. Uh, pretty good matchup here for Shed to go by. Handoff, Roberts extends and puts it down. And Houston has its biggest lead. Yeah, I don't like that matchup for Texas A&M with Coleman out there trying to guard Shedd at 6'8". Shedd's just going to pick him apart off the dribble and make good things happen for Houston. Let's watch him out there. He goes by him. That's not the problem. Now he just has to find out who's open and let Roberts deliver. Go watch CBS Sports HQ for free 24-7 coverage of the big dance and all the biggest moments in sports. Catch tournament highlights, picks, previews, recaps, and much more. Download the CBS Sports app to watch today. LJ Cryer, Jimmy, starting to take the game over for the Cougars. And I like the way that they involved them more importantly because in the first half, he was two for seven, 0 for five from three. But you know he's he's a, a winner, he's a shooter, he's a gamer. So they had to do something to try to get him involved. So 10 of his 16 points have come since halftime. Quick spin, and it's taken away by Cryer. He's doing it at both ends. Yeah, you know, Spiro, I think it's like with Texas A&M, go put the ball in the baskets. Once you get a little bit of a, a break and you get an advantage, Stop with the foot passes and just go and deliver. Get to the line again. Buzz Williams reinserting Manny Obasaki into the game. Can't waste any more time here as he plays with three. Little pass sharp. Ran for the save. Big play. And that was Garcia again, getting a hand in the middle of it. So here's Obasaki, 4 of 10 shooting. Crossover dribble. Here he comes to the rack. Full extension. Big basket for the Yankees. And so smart. Get it into the middle of the floor. Stop with the try to make extra passes if you have a shot. Get it and put it in the hoop. 17 starts as a freshman two years ago. Last year, he had that broken bone in his hand, really put a wrench in his season. But boy, as he put it together on the biggest stage. Francis on the catch, extends. Oh! <laughs> Him listed at 6 1, but that looked like somebody would be 6 8. What a finish along the baseline! Jamal Shed making his own March Madness. Great defensive effort by Houston down low. Well, Basaki trying to go right to the cup, and the Aggies come up empty. Dreyer feeds the post. Roberts double team. 
Shed. Eric Pass. And maybe the first mistake he's made with the ball in his hands tonight. It's only the fourth Houston turnover all night. Shed making it happen. Watch the left side. Ball bounces. Pretty neat for a six foot one guy to finish it off like that. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> well, two schools separated by about 100 miles doing battle on the biggest stage. Which of these two will be moving on to Dallas? Jamal Shedd has been lethal down the stretch. Let them hear about it here in Memphis. Here's Jim and Jamison looking on. He's kind of moving up on the edge of his seat a little bit, isn't it? Before he was sitting back a little bit more. Well, this Cougars defense. No unit more stingy or stingier in the country. Can they hold on here as they protect this nine-point lead? Here comes Radford. Sharp. Oh, the, what a play. <laughs> Man, was that a great play. Instead of trying to catch the ball with two hands, he just bangs it down and dribbles it. Let's go of it. Perfectly executed. Winner here will take on Duke. As we come up on the 11-minute mark in regulation, shed the kick. A little bit too much velocity on that pass. So watch. a couple of successive turnovers by the Cougars. Watch the effort and watch straight down. That's, a, that's just a... A thinking man's play right there to get that done. Obasiki, they sent Francis over on a double team. And Obasiki now is going to reset. Yeah, does Taylor ever need to find a shot or two here? See if he can get on track too to give him another offensive weapon. Obasiki coughs it up. Fight for it. And it's taken by Roberts. I think Kelvin Sampson with the lefties that he referred to, they, that he told his guys, They'll go right initially, and then they'll swing back to the middle with their left hands. They've bottled it up two times now. Jamal Shed, the orchestrator. Nine seconds to shoot. Cryer. What a little bit short. Rebound cleared by Washington. Yeah, let's see if Taylor gets on track a little bit. They've been picking him up. Taylor taking Ooh. some contact. They're not going to count the field goal. Contact before the gather, say the officials. It's on Cryer. That's going to be his third personal. He gets untracked with the crossover. This is close. It's a good call. It's on the floor right there before he gets into the shot. 21 sharp. And another whistle here. This will be the third team foul as they get sharp here. That's his third personal. By the way, we touched on it the other night. LJ Cryer, part of that Baylor National Championship team as a freshman back in 21. He's trying to do what no player has ever done in the history of the sport. Win it with two different schools. That is a massive three for Washington at AM. Especially when you think that he only shoots 27% from the three-point stripe on the season. So Houston, I think, kind of forced the action into his hand that he delivered. The sophomore from New Orleans. And just like that, it's a six-point game. He keeps switching everything now. Texas A&M out front. Oh, don't leave him. Don't leave him. Cryer! Oh, well, they're lucky. So we move past the midway point, second half. Get it to Taylor. Let him off. Taylor, right. crossover. A oh. little bit too much. Look at Shed. Man, does he have some hops or what? We saw it on the dunk. That was... A terrific rebound. Look at the foul trouble. That's a big story here down the stretch of this game. Wade Taylor, by the way, is now one for seven from three. Roberts turns the corner, leans in, and he goes off glass. You know, for a guy at 235 pounds, Spiro, number one, he's quick. Number two, he gets off the floor, but that's a soft shot for a guy with those kind of size. Boy, Cryer may have gotten away with a foul. Radford is bumped at the rim. And if this is on Francis, and it is, it's going to be his fourth personal. And watch the way he operates. Here he comes, little blast of the hoop, and a nice touch for the lefty. 
Jim, if you're Buzz Williams, you just got to tell you guys to keep attacking the rim. Yeah, I would do the same thing. Francis picks up his fourth, with still 8.45 left in regulation. Yes, sir, I, th I think you're right on that. I think you keep, I think you get the ball in Taylor's hands, right? And let him do something with it outside. I don't think a two for 13 at this point in today's game, he's got to worry about two for 13. If I'm Buzz Williams, I'm telling him, you keep shooting, we'll find a way for that ball to go in. Tyrese Radford, the graduate senior who played for Buzz Williams at Virginia Tech. Buzz has nicknamed him Boots. He said he's tough as leather. He's had an incredible run during this month when his team has needed him most. A little isolation now with Garcia out front. Nice Boy, hands. That pass broken up. James oh. Carter, boy, he stepped out of bounds. Nearly had what would have been a sensational play. And it wasn't by much. He just barely, much, just barely grazed the line. Watch when he comes over here with his right foot. Or is that his left foot? Boy, Jimmy, what do you think? Oh, I don't know. I was kind of leaning forward. I thought he hit the line. Boy, well, that, that was replay. Cool. It didn't look like it. As close as it gets. Tough little break for the Aggies. Yeah, because they were off to the races that you just touched on. Six-point game. Cryer is going to feed the high post. Roberts attacks over two. What a shot. Oh, they forced him right into a double team, and you're right. He just went right over the double team with that soft bank again. Jawan Roberts, the redshirt senior, hobbled, playing with that shin injury. Here comes Radford on the attack. And the relentless driving of AM continues. Watch Roberts go to work. They run him to a double team right here, and he still reacts and goes right over Garcia to finish it off, but he may very well have picked up his four. After all the games are over, Adam Lefko, Jay Wright, Candace Parker, and Seth Davis will have all the highlights and analysis on Inside March Madness, presented by Buick, later tonight only on TBS. Let's get our game summary here with 7.51 left. Eight-point lead for the Cougars. See the shooting numbers. AM just miraculously staying within striking distance. They've done it on the offensive glass. And now Tyrese Radford at the free throw line to try to cut into this Houston lead. He's two for five tonight. It's very interesting with the turnovers in this game. There were only three combined in the first half, and now we're up to 15, so there's 12 in the second half. So a little sloppy to play with the passes, but the defense is kind of sliding all over the place to intercept and deflect. And I still think the next time down, you, one or two times down the floor, you may want to call Taylor's name for Texas A&M and see if he can bury something. You're going to need him active. This is Cryer, elevates, big shot for Houston. Boy, I'm not sure I really agree with that double team on Shed. He hasn't made many mistakes, and he knows exactly where his teammate's going to be. And Cryer, little lofty pass again to get him in good stride. Oh, Radford, oh. they're going to get an offensive foul. Boy, Sharp Jimmy has made some big plays at this end of the floor with his defense. Yeah, he's just stick. Watch him just hold his ground right here. He knows he's trying to get, get him to back him in. And that elbow lifts a little bit. And watch the double team here and that little float pass. And they're leaving the wrong guy, in my opinion, in Cryer, who's shot it really well all season long. 39% from three. I don't think he's the guy you want to leave. That's a good point. Jimmy, you watch this Houston team play, and you, you're mesmerized by some of the offensive ability and the talent, but all of these offensive guys play defense. Oh, yeah. And that's a must for Calvin Sampson. Cryer, Sharp, as we get a whistle blown here against the Aggies. Reminder, the Sweet 16 begins Thursday with the Nissan NCAA tip-off on TBS at 6.30 Eastern, followed by double headers. On uh, both CBS and TBS. One of these two teams will be moving on to Dallas, where they will take on the Duke Blue Devils. Duke, the winner earlier tonight against James Madison.
Boy, a and they've been so scrappy with their defense. They need something here, but this is going to be a reach-in foul against Radford. And yeah, that's one where you go around his back and, and watch how he tries to reach around his back. This isn't going to cut it because there's just too much room to carry yourself around him to get a hand on it. Not a good decision. And now they have no more fouls to give. Number six on Texas A&M. We'll come up on the seven-minute mark. That shit is really interesting to watch as a player. He's so good at handling the basketball, but look, look his handle. He's also looking over the court to get shooters the shot. Sharp, a little bit too much. Shot clock was down to three seconds. Is Taylor trying to take over? Taylor, nice double team lead pass. Garcia flicks it up boy, and nearly went. See, that's why I think you have to have Taylor touching the ball, Spiro. Force him to either shoot the ball, long range, get him to do something with the ball in the middle of the floor, driving, or pass the ball. And here he comes. He's double teamed right here. A slip cut. And what does he do? He finds him and gets him to the free throw line. Now you have to make your free throws because this has not been the strong point of Texas A&M tonight. 15 of 18 before that, now 16 of 29. And just think of how good this A&M team has been over the last couple of weeks. The upset over the two seed in the SEC tournament, Kentucky in the quarters. And then nearly beat Florida after they blew that big lead in the semis. What do they have left in the tank here down the stretch? That's something on the ball shed said. It looks like some moisture on the ball as uh, Shed gets the attention of the officials. I'm not sure I've seen that before. <laughs> we'll take it out over here on the sideline. And have four to get it over. New ten seconds. Officials say he'll have all ten seconds to get it over here. Okay. I'll go with that. Shed guarded. Now on a switch by Carter. And he could go by him out front if he wants to. Shed on a leaner. Missed it. Man, Garcia can rebound in traffic, can he? Here we go. Action with the ball. Let's see what he does with it. Taylor tracked down on the perimeter by Washington as we hit the six minute mark. Here in Memphis. Well, here's the competitor in Taylor. Let's see what he can do if he gets up the ball quickly. Radford bottled up. Seven on the timer. Taylor. Oh, boy. Mm. Well, he still had time to maneuver, Jimmy. Boy, this is going to be a travel. What a break for the Aggies. Sure was. And you're right about Taylor just then. Well, I want to see him go to the basket, towards the basket with it. I thought it was close to a tie-up, but it was a, a, a fall down with possession, which is a walk. So here you see the rebound come off. Get possession, two hands on the ball. Yeah, I think that's a good call. Catches it and falls down with it. So they put 20 on the shot clock. Wade Taylor, the inbounder. Here comes Radford looking for any kind of daylight. Look at the there. defense by Sharp. Washington off target. Last touch by Radford. I would almost say that the best part of Kelvin Sampson's defense is the watch the watch the way they react here. Get out in position, get out of position again, and you're stopping people from going by it. That's probably the stamp that I would put on Cal Kelvin Sampson's defense. And you know what, Spiro? The big guys do that also, just not the perimeter players. Kelvin Sampson refers to the holy trinity of basketball. Defense, rebounding, and taking oh. care of the ball. As we get an offensive foul here, it's on Sharp. Uh, oh, what are they <laughs> Much. Boy, it looked like Washington <laughs> just kind of ran into Sharp. That's a tough little call. Does the guy behind them pull him down, too? Maybe it isn't on Sharp. Well, it looks like it is not on Sharp. Yeah, I, led you to, I led you down a bad path there. 
So they do get Washington, and that clearly appeared to be the correct call. Because yeah, the officials started pointing initially down the other way like they were going to change direction. So one and one, it's the seventh team foul against the Aggies. And Sharp hits on the front end. Well, whatever you call there, it can't be on Sharp. Sharp. <laughs> he got sandwiched in there. Emmanuel Sharp, what a player he's become for Kelvin Sampson, the redshirt sophomore from Tampa. All Big 12 honorable mention. And he's given the Cougars a 10-point lead with five and change left. Rafford stripped at last touch by Houston. Boy, the defense is just terrific. Absolutely terrific. Who's going to get a hot hand for Texas A&M? Because they have to find somebody to get something to go down. Radford, massive shot for the Aggies. This team has shown so much fight. Can they go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the mighty Cougars? Shed, and he's going to shoot. Down the other end, they look at look for the shot and go over the top, and there's screens right there. Pulls the trigger beautifully. And then Shed comes down and just makes up for it by getting to the free throw line again. Let's check in with John. Well, guys, Calvin Sampson talks so much about the winning DNA of this program, especially Jamal Shedd. He's one of his favorite players he's ever coached. Think about this for a second, guys. Jamal Shedd, during his career, has only been to the second weekend of the NCAA tournament. Final four as a freshman, elite eight then as a sophomore. And last year, the Sweet 16, five minutes away, Spiro from going four for four. For the emotions of a mother, his mom, Lisa, he has had one of the all-time careers for a program that has had some of the titans of the sport walk through their place. Can he lead him, lead this program to the holy grail of college basketball? Obasik, he up and under, no fight for it. He's got it. Last touch by the Aggies. Just not enough oomph on that ball with... Obasaki was in fairly decent position, but he was trying to shoot it on the way down. And hit the lower part of the rim. And then they go after it. Yep, that's the right call. Off Carter. Texas A&M hasn't been to the Sweet 16 since 2018. It was Billy Kennedy at the helm. Meantime, the Cougars. Can they take one step closer to their ultimate dream? Cryer lost his footing. He maintains the dribble, and now they say jump, and the possession arrow will keep it here for Houston. And that was Garcia making that quick reaction just then as he went down, and once again, he didn't have possession of the ball as he falls down to my eye. It looks like he's still dribbling, and it's loose. There it is underneath him, but Garcia closes in a hurry. And we're going to get a timeout on the floor. Houston will inbound with six seconds to shoot when we come back. Let that drama build a little bit more here in Memphis with the Cougars clinging to an eight-point lead on TNT. Four and change left in regulation. Let's take a little peek at the Capital One rewarding performance. Well, when you look at the way these perimeter players complement one another, they find each other, sheds a leader, and... Here's a little action for you on the baseline for Shed at 6-1 going up to finish that one off. Great performance by those three guys so far. The Houston Cougars behind Kelvin Sampson and one seed in the tournament for a second straight year. The only other time that's happened in their history in back-to-back -back years. They have to go back to five slam a jamma in 1983. Sweet 16, each of the last four. This juggernaut of a program that they have built. Interestingly, we have not seen a Ramon Walker tonight. Here's Sharp, has to work quickly. Boy, what a play by Sharp with the shot clock winding down. And he's going to earn a trip to the free throw line. But he knew that he had the six seconds to work with when it was entered to him. And he used every second of it to put the ball on the floor a couple of times. Smart thinking by him. 85% free throw shooter. Remember in their opening round game, scoreless first half, 13 in the second, 
And tonight, kind of similar trajectory. 16 points after halftime. If they make a deep run, this kid is going to be one of the biggest reasons why. And they have needed everything he's given them over the course of the season, Jimmy, with all the injuries. Yeah. And interesting enough, Spiro, you know, the, the foul trouble that we highlighted at the half, there's still a couple of guys, there's, you know, four guys with four, but they've all hung around for a long period of time in this second half. Well, Texas A&M has to pick it up a little bit. Make sure, though, you don't hurry and force shots, but play quicker. Matches the biggest lead of the night here. Obasaki. Nice read. They jumped him again, coming back with that spin. Here comes Taylor. Wow. Misses everything. Yeah, he was in, he just had that in a bad spot. Probably should not have shot that one. That defense just closes in on you in a hurry, and the help side is there also consistently for Kelvin Sampson's team. Shed into the corner. Sharp. He buries it. Emmanuel Sharp trying to take the Aggies heart. It's a 13-point game as we get a whistle at the other end with 343 left and the Aggies on the ropes. And here's the help. There's one there. There's a second coming in to help. Now you're stuck. And now watch what happens over here. They fill in again. So now he's going up against two bigger guys. And that's the fourth personal on Sharp with 343 left. Can't afford any misses at the free throw line. Because they have had plenty of misses. Total of 14. Obasaki, not a great free throw shooter, but he hits on both here. An 11 point game. Obasaki is going to sit with Carter in, and that last shot. That was a biggie, wasn't it? Here comes a 1 2 2. They're going to look for a trap, but Shed is real difficult and prior. They know, they know what they're doing. And I'm not sure they want to bounce that ball. They just barely got that over. Huge discrepancy in attempted free throws as you just saw that last graphic. Something else that the Cougars have overcome to this point. And this is going to be an illegal pick, and Francis is done. Yeah, you know, watch his right leg there, Spiro. Just see the, the stick out of the right leg. You got to keep that within the framework of your shoulder. And he sticks the right leg out. It's going to go right the other way. See how far out he is? It's supposed to be underneath your shoulder with the width. And he extends it. And Radford goes down, and it's a good call from the officials. So Javier Francis, first-year starter for Kelvin Sampson, has fouled out. Radford should get over there and help out, too, with this entry pass. Sampson is going to go small here instead of bringing in Lott. There you go. They go with Wilson up front with Roberts. So Radford to the cup. Smart. Big sequence. Real smart. Not only that drive, but the entry pass. Get it away from a one-on-one -on -one situation. Here we go again. Watch this trap right here. If they could slow you down, that's where they're looking to get your mileage. Good pass, though, into the middle of the floor by Shed to relieve it. Right to the safety valve. Three minutes left in Memphis. Which of these two teams is headed to Dallas in the Sweet 16? Look at him popping. That means he's going to try to go by you. Shed the fake. Oh, they got a piece. Roberts is there to stick it back. Giving the Aggies a taste of their own medicine. As we get a whistle here, Shed can't believe it. Stops the clock, number one. See, he started bouncing a little bit. I don't know if anybody got a hand on that. Must have, because Shed missed it by that much. It must have been tipped a little bit. It's on Shed. That's his fourth personal. So Kelvin Sampson, a lot to think about. He's just lost Francis. One and one here for Taylor. Just hasn't been his night yet. Young man who has just had a magnificent season, especially over the last couple of weeks. Main free throw gives him an opportunity to set up the defense. They've been coming 1-2-2. Let's two, two. see what they're looking at right now. About the same thing. Hey, 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 hey. 
239 left. Shed will be the inbounder. And watch for he's out of frame right now, but you got to get Washington in this play right here. He's got to kind of help play free safety there to make sure they don't go to the middle. Oh, almost a steal by Carter. Next whistle against the Aggies puts Houston in the double bonus. Shed the kick sharp from the corner. Splash! Man, you talk about timely shooting. Here comes Taylor inside. No. Offensive rebound. Obasik. And it's going to be a reach and foul. And that will put AM in the double bonus. It's on Cryer, and that's his fourth. And just sit it out, wait it out. Yes, said it a couple of times that I, I just love to play with Shed if you're a shooter because he just really picks the defense apart and makes perfect passes. That was assist number eight for him tonight. So Cryer with four, Shed with four. Francis is fouled out. 2-10 left in a 12-point game. Texas A&M needs a turnover right now, Spiro. And watch the execution of Houston against this full court action. Buzz Williams will reinsert Radford here. Just the chess match between these two coaching staffs continue. Yeah, we've seen him do two things. We've seen him run somebody in the middle of the floor, and then you can also go down the sideline, too. You have options. There's the middle of the floor. Nice look. Inside, Wilson wide open. This is Taylor turned back by Wilson. You want some defensive stats? How's two for 17 striking with Taylor trying to get his shot off and getting anything going against this Houston defense? We're running out of room on that graphic, aren't we, with the foul trouble? One fifty-two left. And Buzz Williams going to take a timeout. But this Houston Cougar team starting to lean on the Aggies. AM looking for some late game magic here in Memphis. Go to the middle, and what a release pass. That's as good as it gets without any dribbles after the second catch. There's your game reset with 152 left in regulation. Buzz Williams and the Aggies down to their final timeout as they try to play out of a 12 point hole with a date to the Sweet 16 on the line here in Memphis. Radford will be the inbound. There you go. Boy, Washington sneaks in for the open layup. That's just giving them a freebie right there. Allows them to set up again. Let's see how they react with this if they can fill up the middle of the floor defensively. Keep in mind, Shed and Cryer playing with four as Garcia is going to reach in to put Wilson at the free throw line. Double bonus for both teams from here on out. Two free throws. Nobody home at all there. Breakdown. Not a bad foul, though, Spiro, when you're down 10. I've always looked at it if you're down three possessions and there's about a, you know, call it a minute 10 or more on the clock. Not a bad idea to start fouling and hope for some misses. And if it's, they fouled the right guy, too. It's 61%. Wilson misses on the first. Think of the relationship between these two coaches. They go back 30 years. Got the report from John at the top. Buzz Williams, a student manager at Navarro College, just outside Dallas. Kelvin was the head coach at Oklahoma. They struck up a relationship, and the respect level of John has grown since then. How about that defense? Roberts, Taylor, pulls and hits. Finally. Go figure on that. May have been his toughest shot of the night. It's an eight-point game. Buzz Williams upset about something here with 126 left in regulation. I like the way they forced the action. It was a really good block by Roberts. And look at this shot. I think that's going to be a two, right? What they? Boy, his right foot's on the line, Jimmy. Yep. yep. Officials have gone to the replay monitor to look. 
They're, I think they called it a three, Spiro. I think. Yeah, yep. They have changed it to a two. So two-point field goal. How about the quick reaction, though, for him to shoot the basketball? Finally getting a shot to go for him, but it's been a long night for Taylor. I mean, really long as far as percentages are concerned. Three for 18, one for eight from the three-point line. And now you just go crazy on the defensive side. If you foul, you foul. So be it. It's a nine-point game. They're going to see how they're lining up this football look right there. One guy's got to come back strong. There's Pryor. They missed him. Shed throws in. Pryor crowded. Well, they went for the initial steal. This will be against Obasaki. And that is going to be his fourth. Yeah, this football look is designed to start with everybody congested and then get everybody out of the way. And if one, I have always said that if one guard against the defensive guard, if you can't get open, you're probably playing this, the wrong position. So LJ Cryer, a young man whom Kelvin Sampson actually recruited out of high school. He grew up in Katy, Texas. Of course, chose Baylor initially, was a freshman on their national championship team. Kelvin didn't get him the first time, but he got him the second time around. What a season this kid put together for the Cougars. Among the most prolific three-point shooters in the country. I was just going to say, their three perimeter guys are pretty good free throw shooters. Radford's uh -oh. way he buries it. Uh-oh. Tyrese Radford. Trying to breathe life into the Aggies. It's a two-point field goal. Another look overhead here. So an eight-point game with 116 remaining. Watch the left foot. Oh, boy. That Officials is... have gone to the replay monitor again. Boy, that's close. Yeah, he may have cleared the three-point line. Jimmy, you got the 2010. What do you think? Uh, I'm thinking that's, you know, when, when a lefty shooter shoots the basketball, his left foot slides up a little bit, as does the right. We just saw that a second ago with Taylor shooting the ball. His hit foot went forward also. Let's bring in Gene's territory. Gene, we'll let you take a, a swing at this. Yeah, from what I've got right now, Spiro, from what they've ruled on the court, I don't think you can overturn that one and make it a three. You know, we're looking at that front toe naturally, but it appears that it is over top of the, you know, the top of the line. I don't see anything indisputably, you know, in the other direction that would cause me to say you could overturn it. Gene, you may have to get out the old index card for that. <laughs> <laughs> Your old football <laughs> nice call, I Spiro. You're right on that one, Spiro. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, Gene, you know what's interesting, <laughs> though, too, on the three is that the previous one by Taylor, he missed it by maybe three inches. That one less than an inch would have put two more points up on the board for Texas A&M really would have made this game interesting. Marcus Pettigrew telling yes, him you're that right they, on that too Jimmy. They did not have enough to overturn. We thank Gene for hopping on with us. So two point field goal for Radford. Inbound. Oh he stepped out. Step out of bounds. Well, Taylor jumped him. Squeezing him along the sideline. And she turns the corner. I thought he was going for the foul right there. He reaches over. With the assist from the Aggies bench, the officials make the call. Taylor with a quick hitter. He's going to fire. Oh! He buries it. I knew he wouldn't go away. It's a five-point game contact here as Sharp is not to the deck. Oh boy, you talk about getting to a spot and getting a shot off in a hurry. Look where he starts that shot. Two or three strides behind the three-point line. But he knew exactly what he's doing. There's that rotation I've been referencing before, as good as anybody I've seen. Again, double bonus for both teams from here on out. So two free throws coming up for Sharp. Keep in mind the first meeting between these two teams, that furious second half comeback by the Aggies, down 21, tied it. As we take another look at that little sequence, the contact from Taylor, 
Kind of interesting, too, because it looked like Sharp started by putting his right arm around him. Watch the right arm. The officials have gone to the replay monitor to determine if there was anything extra from Sharp. Then our crew here, Marcus Pettigrew, Lee Cassell, and Jeb Hartness. Gene, what do you think? I, I think you've got a common foul on, on uh, Texas A&M on this one, Spiro. I know he's swim moving a little bit, Sharp is, but I've got Taylor's right, you know, left arm around that waist. And then when Sharp starts to spin move, you already have a restriction. And Gene, when they go to the monitor right there, they're not looking to make a, a call right or wrong on that particular play. They're looking for something extra. Yes, most definitely, Jim. You're looking for some type of a hook and hold, a pin restriction, something to that level. And as we've seen on the replay, nothing rises to the level for that. So we go with the common foul. Yep. Thanks, Gene. All right, so Emmanuel Sharp, 24 points, 6 of 12 from 3. See what he's done at the free throw line. This young man has not played a bigger game in his life when he consider the stakes. And a trip to the Sweet 16 on the line here in Memphis. Remember, he's the one who hit that big three late in the first meeting between these two teams in Houston. And Sharp, a new career high with 26. They got to go quicker than this right here. Taylor trying to fend off Cryer. Oh, and he's fouled. Wow. Behind the line, too. Unbelievable. There's still 55 seconds left. It seems like the clock hasn't really moved much. You know he's going to go up and pull up for the shot. And LJ Cryer, Jimmy, has fouled out for Houston. What a potential swing this is. Clearly got him across the right arm. So if you're Taylor, if you can hit three here, this potentially a four-point game with 55 seconds, and now no more Cryer for the rest of the night. Yeah, when you take Cryer off the floor with his 88% free throw shooting, he's another catch and foul type guy. Uh oh. That's, that's because he has that rotation on the ball. He gets some friendly bounces, this young man, with the way he shoots. Wade Taylor from Dallas. Trying to will his Aggies back to his hometown. And the Sweet 16, if he can somehow bring them back. The Aggies just have to continue to do what they've been doing. Try for a quick steal. And then put Houston to the free throw line. And Houston's job is to make free throws. He can run the baseline right now. Good double team. Inbound to Sharp, and they get him. Just a couple of seconds come off the clock. 52.9. Yeah, the well-coached teams, he get, they get the double over here, but watch the arms. They have him in a good spot. That's a nice back reverse pivot just then to get some separation there, because he wasn't going to be able to get that back to shed. And now Obasaki has fouled out for Texas A&M. That's a huge loss for the Aggies. One of the biggest reasons why they've gotten to this point. Magnificent run that he's been on over the past couple of weeks. Let's see how Buzz Williams replaces Obasaki here for the final 52.9. This has been like a crazy 45 seconds, hasn't it been? This was a 13-point yeah. Houston lead. You thought maybe it was over. But surprise, surprise, this... Gritty team coached by Buzz Williams trying to fight their way back. Look at the foul ledger now for both teams. Multiple starters for Houston. Now Obasaki done and Sharp has 27 points. Yeah, they're 80% from the free throw line in Texas A&M. 25 of 39 for 64%. Well, Here we go. Can't bear to watch. Five-point game, 50 seconds. Rexford crosses over on the attack. Missed it right at the rim, and then Washington cleans it up. Same exercise right here for your Texas A&M. It's a one-possession game. Inbound to Sharp, and they're going to get a timeout here yep. with Shed. Boy, that was a blast of a, a, a double team on the right in that corner over there.
A little up and under and too much, but look at the cleanup action. They know how to offensive rebound, that's for sure. They have 21 of them tonight. There's your game reset, 42.1 seconds left. Double bonus for both teams, one timeout left apiece. LJ Cryer has fouled out for Houston. Huge loss for Kelvin Sampson and his staff. It's a battle of attrition at this point. So we got a fresh, most of the timeout, they get the 10 seconds to get the ball up. If I'm one of the play, Texas A&M players, Spiro, real fast, I'm telling the officials, we're going in for a double team, but we're going in because we have the possession arrow. We're going in for this, the double team, I mean, the, uh, the jump ball type of situation, the tie-up. So I'm, not, I'm telling them that just because I don't want to give up a quick foul. A 13-point Houston lead First. is down to three. And now the Aggies drop back. It's a one-possession game here in Memphis. A tough decision to make, too, if you're Buzz Williams here. To play it out. Jamal Shedd, the player of the year in the Big 12, holding the rock for the Cougars here at the He lost it! Knocked out of bounds with 9.6. Little off balance here. Well defended. Tough shot again. And they go to work on the glass. Another opportunity there. Just a little too long by Radford. And he seems confident it's Texas A&M ball, but he doesn't have the whistle. Officials once again going to the replay monitor. Who touched it last? Is that number 11? Is that Dunn who got his left hand on it? Let's bring in Gene's territory again. Gene, how do you see this? I've got it off done. I've got AM ball and I've got 10.1 on the game clock, fellas. Good call on the extra uh, second there, too, Gene, because they got 9.6 up on the clock. Here's the tip, and that clock should stop once, once that ball hits the out of bounds. It hits the floor out of bounds. Looks like the officials will confirm it will be Texas A&M basketball. 10.1 on the game clock. And keep in mind, Spiro, that Kelvin Sampson, when he's up three points, he doesn't like the foul in these situations. He likes to play it out. Here's the ball going down, and 10-1. 10-1's a good call. So he doesn't like the foul in these situations, is what he, he mentioned to us. So he, and I don't blame him for believing in this defense, especially with the way Texas A&M re rebounds if they go to the line for a second opportunity. Unless Buzz is getting him out here on the court to play, <laughs> which I don't think he is, to call a timeout. Buzz Williams will take his final timeout and let that drama build a little bit more here in Memphis. Wade Taylor, one point in the first half, 15 in the second half. And this is what they're playing for, a trip to Dallas in the Sweet 16 where the Duke Blue Devils await. And people may ask, that can Houston that average of 73 points on average score? Yeah, they put up 86. Although Texas A&M, got to give them credit, they fought against a great defensive team. This is just about what we anticipated, a terrific battle. Jim, take me into the mind of Buzz Williams. What are you thinking about here on this throwing? You know, it, it's, you have the opportunity if you get a quick slice to the basket to get two, if you get it within two or three seconds. I'm guessing though that they're probably gonna go for three because Houston is a very good free throw shooting perimeter team. They get the basketball, they could get down and seal it. So. It's, this is the toughest choice that he has right now. And if I were in this situation, I don't know if Houston's going to give up the easy one, the cut to the basket, but they're also going to defend the perimeter. So I'd be looking for a perimeter shot with some secondary screen set. So, Buzz look, Williams. Yeah, so look for the three on this one with the screens. And remember, this guy right here has struggled all night long. Did they set a double screen for him to find and try to trigger him? 
Ten yeah. seconds left. This is where dreams are made. There he is. The, he went to the left corner. Radford throws in. They get it to Taylor. He's going to fire. No. Taylor, the rebound back. The flick misses. One second. And the officials say jump. Possession arrow will keep it here with the Aggies. One second left. So Taylor got a couple of them. I wouldn't say they're good looks because they were guarding the perimeter, but Kelvin Sampson doesn't foul when you're up when he's up three points and he lived up to the strategy that he maintains. Looks like they're gonna put a little bit of time back on the clock now. 1.2 as Kelvin Sampson takes his final timeout. So this is a good decision with the catch. Garcia tries to get it to the shooter. And you can tell with that ball just a touch long. Boy, Jimmy, it was on line. Yeah, and this one was off left. Remember, the Aggies are out of timeouts. So Taylor frantically just trying to get it back up quickly. And now one last timeout huddle for both of these two coaches. Texas A&M, 6 of 18, shooting the three. Remember, they were one of the worst three-point shooting teams in the country up until the last month or so. And do they have some late-game magic left up their sleeves? You know what I'm thinking, too, Spiro? I, I just mentioned a couple of times that Kelvin Sampson does not like to foul. But if this ball comes in, if you could time it with the, the catch and foul real fast, I'm not so sure he's going to take a chance of that with the way he believes in what he, he normally does. So somebody, and this is, I mean, you could set all the plays in the world. If your primary option is closed down, whoever gets it has to let it fly. For the drama of this tournament, unlike anything in sports, 1.2 seconds left. Texas A&M. Here's Taylor, keep in mind. Race to that corner. Radford, the inbounder, looking to bounce. Garcia. Oh, <laughs> we are tied. Anderson Garcia. And we are headed to overtime here in Memphis. Like, like I mentioned, Spiro, whoever gets it, let her rip. Oh, boy. Don't you just love this time of year? Look at the way he has to pick that up, kind of down by his knees. Catch it, bring it up, and I'll let them tell the rest. <laughs> oh man unreal finish <laughs> a trip to dallas in the sweet 16 hanging in the balance on tnt here in memphis this overtime is made possible by buffalo wild wings anderson garcia the senior from the Dominican Republic, the Mississippi State transfer may be saving the season for the Aggies. Hey, Spiro, watch the inbound pass, too, because two guys were covered. And as an inbound passer, I know it's not the dramatic shot, but for him to be patient enough to say option number one is closed down, option number two is closed down, I got to whip this thing to the middle of the floor. That was a pretty headsy play by that kid. I think it was Radford taking it out. March Madness Magic here in Memphis. Look at the run by the Aggies to close a frantic comeback. And AM back from the dead as we enter overtime. I, I looked up at one point and said there was 58 seconds left. It just seemed like it'd be going on forever and ever. And Jimmy, keep in mind, LJ Cryer and Francis have fouled out for yep. Houston. Two huge pieces, certainly Cryer. Yeah, foul. 
Fouls on personnel now are tough. Shed misfires. Watch out. Roberts, oh, the oh, boy. boy, looked like he was out of bounds, maybe. Short from deep. Oh. He's got to call timeout. I think he's tied up over there in something. I can't tell with the angle. But he looked at the official and said, I can't get back in play. Emmanuel Sharp is playing the game of his life. He's got 30 for the Cougars. Man, I, I, I think he hits it off Shed, and Shed catches it off his own body. Hard angle to see from where we're sitting. Boy, that was close. Also, keep in mind, Manny Obasiki fouled out for the Aggies. Guy who's been one of their stars over the last couple of weeks. This is Taylor bottled up in the corner. He cuffs it up. There's the foul trouble. It's going to be interesting. Taylor just gave that ball up, but I think he's going to try to at least will this team to a win here. But so is this guy with the basketball shed. Sharp. Oh. Back rim. That didn't miss Not by the much. way, and it's taken by Garcia. Ah, that didn't miss by a whole lot. Here comes Radford, a little hesitation maneuver, and he's going to shoot free throws. Sharp is still down, and it's on him, and he has fouled out. What a big call this is. As the Cougars lose their top scorer tonight, and the guy that they have leaned on down the stretch. And for the first time tonight, Ramon Walker, who returned to the lineup for the first time in a month in their first round win over Longwood, is into the game, hadn't played tonight. The lateral meniscus tear in his knee, played more than 15 minutes the other night, and suddenly thrust under the microscope here in overtime. And Jimmy, now it's really a battle of attrition. Radford goes one of two. It's a two-point game with 120 gone by in overtime. Told you what's at stake. Winner here advances to Dallas to take on Duke. Boy, a different look without the shooters out there, right? So Sharp and Cryer, who have scored 50 tonight between them, are both done for the night. Where yeah. do they turn? It's yeah. Shed. This is who they got to turn to. Let's see if he's going to shoot it. Three seconds. Crowded by Taylor. He fires, and he is fouled. Oh. Unbelievable. That's just a real bad decision by Taylor. He should have been aware of the shot clock situation and did everything he possibly could to get away from this shot. It's going to be a four shot. Let's see. He comes in. He starts reaching a bit. And I think he gets body on Shed right around the waist. So they bail out Shed, three free throws. Jamal Shed, by the way, who's played the entire game so far, misses on the first. Sharp, 30 points if you've just hopped on with us. Seven threes tonight. And now the hopes and dreams of this Cougars team resting squarely on the shoulders of Jamal Shed. This is mom, Lisa, the pride of Maynard, Texas. Hoping to get his Cougars to Dallas. Four-point game. And because of the different lineup out there, they go, they're going to a zone, Spiro, that they don't play much at all. Still plenty of time to shoot. Taylor shoots over two for a little bit of a force and yeah. Walker the rebound. He had somebody on the left too that he could have dished that for. The key is not to try to do too much if you're Taylor. And try to make up for a bad four for 23 night. Fine line between trying to be yeah. aggressive and some of the decision making down the stretch. 234 left. This guy knows what to do with the ball. 
Malik Wilson makes it a six-point game. 220 left. Here comes Radford. Contact, and he's going to shoot two. You just know that you can put the ball in Shed's hand. Watch him here, and then watch the timing of this cut. They get everybody to roll. That's the kind of defense that Texas A&M likes to play, right? They like to put somebody in the middle of the floor defensively, and he just chews it up on the fly. Oh. Critical miss yep. by Radford. Texas A&M has been outscored in overtime 7-1 with 2.19 left here in Memphis. And if the Aggies lose this game, it'll be the free throw shooting, Jimmy, that they talk about. 26 of 42. Just a little over a 62% clip. He's going to get the assignment. It looks like Washington's going to continue to get the assignment. Remember, he's 6'7". I think Shed believes in his mind that he can go by him when the opportunity arises. Now they've switched off, and now they're back into it. Look at this. Look at Washington clapping right in his face. Washington's going to take his turn on Shed. Five to shoot. Shed elevates, misses. Rebound Radford. Now you don't have to race here. Radford doing his dance, wants to take Dunn, leans in, and lays it up and in for the Aggies. And the hesitation moves Spiro outside when I said you don't have to hurry at that point. He kind of settled down for a second and then blasted it into second gear. Such a smart play on his part, and the lefty once again going left. Radford's got 27, and it's a one-score game again. Now it's shared against a point guard who's a little taller then. Done on the launch. Whoa. Too much. Look who it is. It's Walker. Oh, he's only played, what, three games? What a big time rebound. 63 seconds. Oh. Taylor has the answer. That's the way to come off that left side. Put the ball on the floor and square your shoulders up and show the world that you have some confidence. It's a street fight here in Memphis. Two-point game. And Buzz Williams is jumping up and down over there like a pogo stick. Ten seconds to shoot. 35 left in overtime. Shed. The hop. The floater. Just magnificent. Got to go by somebody if you can. Wow. Taylor's wow. deep shot, and he misses everything. I don't like that one. Watch the brilliance of Shed here. He understands the shot clock. When this ball's in the air, just take a look. He's waiting, waiting, and now all of a sudden, watch the big hop. And he gets the ball in the air, and boom, finishes it off. Now we're back to end of regulation right here, Spiro. 25.1, Wade Taylor, 5 for 25. He's 3 of 13 from deep. Here comes Shed. They've got a foul quickly. Garcia gets to him. With 21.5 left. Well, they tried to foul in the backcourt. Lost a couple of seconds there in that exchange. Mm. Sharp has fouled out. Cryer has fouled out. Texas A&M came back from the dead to tie it. Send this game to overtime. But boy, they're going to need another miracle here with Shed trying to turn out the lights at the free throw line. Oh. Maybe a little tired. I hate to say it because he's so well conditioned, but playing a lot of minutes in an intense game. He has not come off the floor tonight. Now he'll regroup right here. I will be surprised that this shot doesn't clear the front rim. He's led this team to 31 wins this year. Can he get them one more? One for two, five point game. And now Kelvin Sampson's gonna take a timeout. And everyone's gonna catch their breath. Final seconds in Memphis.
Jamal Shedd trying to will his Cougars over the finish line and on to Dallas. There's your game reset, 21.5 left in overtime. Kelvin has taken his final timeout. Buzz Williams has one left. Texas A&M with an incredible 13-3 run at the end of regulation to send this to overtime. Buzz Williams trying to get the Aggies back to the Sweet 16. But have they run out of time here against the big, mighty Cougars from Houston? Yeah, I don't think they give up a layup that easily, so we're going to see what the decision is. Here comes and Taylor. They get him from the back. Some teams, Spiro, give up that layup pretty easily, but did you see how they closed after the foul? You knew they weren't going to give up an easy one and just settle with a three-point lead. Watch them from behind here. I think it's, is it Shed who reaches in first? It is indeed yeah. Shed, and he is fouled out with 18.2 seconds left. And Houston holding a five-point lead. And they did that in three seconds, by the way. They pushed that ball up the floor. And yeah, that's a push. You see the hand on the hip. You're guiding him away from the basket. Even though it's a clean block from behind, the foul occurs before that block. This makes it interesting. Well, with that, Shed, huh? say that adds to the intrigue here. So Shed joins Cryer and Sharp on the bench. And now Ryan Elvin, Little U senior, fourth year walk on, is going to check into the game. How about this spot for that young kid uh, with 18.2 left? Here's Taylor at the line. Well, if he can make it. And then you have your choice where you want to send this ball. Sometimes you say, well, let's direct it to somebody here and there. But right now, if, you, if you're the Houston team, you're doing your best just to get this ball in bounds. Dunn is a 69% free throw shooter. Walker hasn't played enough to really have a statistical number that matters. Let's see who's going to try to get it. Oh, they're, they're really squeezed in tight. Oh, you got to foul him really Down to Elvin, and he's going to shoot free throws. Well, if you're going to put a guy at the line, boy, is this a the guy who's been sitting cold on the bench all night? And look at them. I love the way they're going up to him, kind of just, you know, pretty much saying, just try to put one of these in. Boy, if this moment doesn't typify this tournament, I don't know what does. As Solomon Washington, by the way, has fouled out now for the Aggies. Look at them. They're just. Yeah, trying to get him to relax. Ryan Elvin, who has taken four free throws all season, is going to make that slow, lonely walk to the line in a one-score game with 17 seconds left in the biggest moment of his basketball life. He's appeared in 19 games. Oh. And it's still a one possession game. All right, it wasn't a bad shot for a miss. At least it was long, Spiro, right? A lot of times you come in situations like that, you come up short. So the fact that he went long, this should relax him a little bit more. Boy, he got one. Four point game. Keep in mind, Shed has just fouled out. They roll it into Radford, and here we go. Here comes the Aggies star, and Buzz Williams takes a timeout. Interesting. On the run, he's going towards the basket. I think it might have held off on that one, but he's the coach. And now both teams are out of timeouts. Every time we have thought that the Aggies were done, they have fought back. This was the end of regulation. Anderson Garcia breathing life into AM and sending the game to overtime. And a wild finish to regulation. So, Jimmy, now no timeouts, four point game.
Once again, take us into that puddle and what you're thinking if you're Buzz Williams. I think you're, you're taking the best best option you can. You're going to have guys go into the three-point line. You're also going to have guys slip into the basket. Who's ever open, you take that shot first because you want to score hopefully with 10 seconds on the clock and redo what we just saw a second ago and try to foul somebody. So four of Kelvin Sampson's five starters have fouled out, including Jamal Shedd here in overtime. And Spiro, my thought process is if I can get a quick hitter to the two, I know this game is revolves around the three. With the guys who are not on the floor for Houston, their free throw shooters really aren't on the floor right now. I might just very well take the quick two and try to get them back to the line and hopefully get one more chance with six seconds on the clock or thereabouts. Jace Carter will be the inbounder. 13.6. Inbound Radford elevates. No, it's taken by Wilson. He's fouled with 8.9 left in overtime. Yeah, that's the only thing. When you miss that shot, the percentages really go out the window pretty quickly. I think I'm more tempted to drive that right there where he's going to his left and keep pushing his head down and you'll get a call from the officials. So Malik Wilson now to the free throw line. The double transfer. Last team to win after four players fouled out. You have to go all the way back to 1987 and UTEP. So Spiro, that's why you take the two. Now you have a 99-97 game if you could get the two. I'm not saying you would have gotten the two that easily. But now it gives you eight seconds, 8.9 to come down. I think you missed your calling as a coach. <laughs> Wilson hits on the second. Five point game, 8.9 seconds left. Remember, they're out of timeouts here. Radford, the inbounder. Here comes Taylor. They'll fire from the corner, the three. Hefner, no. Taylor lost it, and it is over. The Houston Cougars survive and advance in a March Madness thriller here in Memphis. We expected a war between these two teams and that's exactly what we got as the Houston Cougars are headed to Dallas at a sweet 16 date with Duke. And what a matchup that is going to be on Friday in Dallas as the Cougars get everything they want from Buzz Williams and his A&M Aggies.